go live now to Tel Aviv where we can speak to Mark Regev. He's a senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you for joining us on the program. And in the past hour, My pleasure. Thank you. And in the past hour, we're reporting uh, comments from the Israeli Prime Minister saying, after following a visit to Gaza, saying that Israel would be deepening the conflict in the territory. Considering what we've seen over the past few weeks, what does deepening mean? It means we will follow through on our goals, which, may, which remain threefold. One, to destroy Hamas's military machine. Uh, two, to get all our hostages back, as you know, over 130 are still being held in Gaza. And number three, to ensure a future situation where uh, there is no longer a terror regime in Gaza that can attack us the way that we were attacked on October 7th. In other words, create a new reality in Gaza, which will ensure stability along the border. That'll be good for Israelis, but that's also good for Gazan Palestinians too. And in the past few days, the Israeli government has said quite publicly that it wants the release of Israeli hostages in Gaza. Part of that would be mediation efforts that are taking place in the Middle East at the moment that would lead to a ceasefire. But what do these comments from the prime minister mean for that, those mediation efforts? Does it not scupper those efforts? On the contrary. We believe if there is a chance to have more hostages come out in the framework of some uh, uh, deal that was negotiated as it was in November, that will only happen because Hamas is facing enormous pressure and is desperate for a timeout, uh, a pause in the fighting. That's what happened in November. Hamas didn't suddenly release hostages because they became humanitarians. On the contrary, they are brutal, bloodthirsty killers. But, but they respond, as President Joe Biden said, they respond to pressure. And we are keeping the military pressure on them, and we think that's the best way to facilitate the release of hostages in the future. And I want to bring you this line that we're getting from the AP News Agency. Just Prime Minister Netanyahu, who was by hostage families during a parliamentary address of immense pressure, not just internationally, but domestically. And you can imagine when families of hostages in Gaza are hearing about a deepening in conflict, many of them are nervous, anxious about the, the safety of their relatives. This isn't going to settle their nerves, is it? Well, one has to feel for the hostage families. One has to hug them because they are going through a living hell. They have loved ones being held by a brutal terrorist organization. And we've all seen the sort of violence that Hamas is capable of. Uh, we saw on October 7th with the headings, the burning of people alive, the mutilations, the rapes, uh, the mass murders, the massacre of young people at the music festival. But we've also unfortunately heard it uh, from the hostages who were released in November, who've reported to us uh, continuously about uh, psychological and physical abuse that they suffered at the hands of their captors, at the hands of Hamas. And so for all these reasons, the families of the hostages have every right to be worried and one can only think about what, what it would be like to be in their in their in their, but you know, Mr. To be in their shoes. Mr. Regev, just to put you the point put the point to you that the families really don't seem to be believing a lot of what the government is saying. Protests continue as we're hearing now the Prime Minister is being booed by families. That's really where the sticking point is for your government and where the pressure is coming from. You're not answering their questions. So, obviously, they have the right to, to express their criticism, uh, and we will listen to whatever they have to say. But uh, to be fair, you hear a range of opinions on hostage families. You don't just hear one opinion. On the extreme, you'll hear people saying that Israel should just stop the fighting and, and, and uh, give And on the other extreme, you'll get hostage families that will tell the government, don't, don't allow one single strike of humanitarian aid into Gaza. That's the best way to pressure them to get the hostages out. We are convinced as a government, and it worked in November, that means it can work uh, uh, in January as well, that military pressure on Hamas will facilitate the release of hostages. It worked in the past, it can work in the future. And today, again, we're reporting on another attack in northern Gaza, this time at the al Magafi refugee camp, where 70 people um, are reported to have died. The Israeli government earlier said that it was going to investigate what's happened there. Do you have any assessment on what's happened? And what does 
this investigation mean? Because we've had this many times from the Israeli government. What do you want like? Well, we, we, we always look into incidents like this, especially when the reported casualties. Those investigations. They're still ongoing. I can't tell you anything definitive. I can only say what is true, that Israel doesn't target civilians. And I can only reiterate it. In that area of, of Gaza, there has been fighting. There have been Hamas terror targets. There have been shooting of rockets into Israel. We don't know what happened. We don't know if these were civilians or if they were Hamas fighters. We don't know if they were caught up in crossfire or what happened. Let's wait and get to the bottom of it. Uh, Hamas is automatic. Yes, they say whatever something happens in Gaza, it's always Israel's fault. Yeah. But when they've said so in the past, uh, it has been exposed uh, that it, that's not always the case. So see what happened here. Let's be patient. Let's get all the facts. But the reality of the situation is that the casualty figures in Gaza continue to rise. Just the other day, you were speaking on the BBC, and I believe you said you think 8,000 um, Hamas fighters are part of this 20,600 casualty figures from the Hamas ministry or authorities in Gaza. That means that there are probably 12,000 non-combatants who've died so far in this war. So once again, the, the, the numbers uh, that come out from Gaza are, of course, provided by the Hamas-controlled Ministry of Health. And I think it's very correct to, to, deal, uh, to, to deal with them with a certain amount of skepticism. At the same time, all those numbers, as you said, they don't give you the military casualties, the combat numbers, casualties. But these numbers are widely recognized by international organizations. Even the Americans agree that the numbers of civilian casualties in Gaza is rising. They're just simply too high. We agree. No, we agree with that. Uh, we don't want to see a single uh, civilian caught up in the crossfire between the Israeli Defense Forces and the Hamas terrorists. And we're making a maximum effort to, to avoid that. And we want to kill Hamas terrorists. We don't want to hurt innocent civilians. And that's why we've been asking civilians to leave areas of combat, to move out of areas we expect there to be heavy fighting. That's why we've sent messages. That's why we've created special safe zones. That's why we've made every effort to keep civilians out of the crossfire. They are not the target of our operation. But it's very difficult for us because as the EU has said, as the United Kingdom has said, as the United States has said, Hamas has a deliberate strategy of using uh, Gazan civilians as a human shield for their terrorist organization. That's why they embed themselves under urban neighborhoods, under mosques, under schools, even under UN facilities, under hospitals. Uh, and that makes our job so difficult. We want to hit Hamas. We don't want to hit civilians. Hamas, on the other hand, wants to use Gaza civilians as a shield. For us, every civilian killed is a tragedy. For Hamas, it's their strategy. They want civilians to die on the altar. But Mr. Regev, just, just on that point about civilian casualties, this isn't just coming from Hamas or aid organizations. This is coming from the US president, your closest ally. So you must admit and you must consider the fact that everyone is really telling you that you are, as the American president said, indiscriminately targeting civilians in this war. Too many innocent civilians have, have, have lost their life because of uh, this war that Hamas uh, uh, launched and because of the ceasefire that Hamas ended. That is correct. Uh, too much tragedy. I, I agree with that. But I would reject any uh, assertion of, of indiscriminate violence by Israel. On the contrary, I've been in meetings where we have shown two international interlocutors the rigid process, the rigorous process we have for target selection, where it relies on intelligence, it relies on there being a, a target as part of Hamas's military machine. Uh, that target is selected, that target then, is, this, the sort of ordinance used is selected, the uh, uh, possible collateral damage is taken into account, and, and only Regev, after it is thank you, thank only you after all the boxes much. have been ticked, only after thank all the boxes have been ticked do we actually launch the weapon. Thank you very much, Mr. Mark Regev, the senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, we can go